It's a spaceship. Coming back from a planet that we hoped would be our future. It started off very much pre-pandemic and unfortunately, to some degree, life uh, life followed art. But, we, you know, a story really about a sort of a, a terrible catastrophic event that's happened to humanity on, on, on Earth. Just as we were getting to the end of the shoot, everything started to feel a bit scary and real. And then very shortly afterwards, we were we were actually locked down so the whole of post-production more or less was completed in in this kind of work from home environment that we still find ourselves in we collaborated with the production designer jim bissell to, to produce this um this model and we went into quite a lot of detail on the area that the space what would be happening over because he was never going to build a physical set for 99 percent of that and we built this quite high res uh, model and then um, we were able to give Martin Ruha the DOP and George Clooney the director an iPad that would let them sort of scout it and we slowly kind of plotted out where the where the spacemen would be going where the astronauts would be traveling to and what we'd be seeing and then at some point in that process the, something interesting happened because we found out that Felicity was pregnant and that, um, that actually her pregnancy meant that the amount of wire work she'd be able to do was a bit more limited in parallel to that, we were playing around with another bit of technology, which is produced by Disney and ILM called uh, Anima, which is a facial recording capture technology. And it was mooted that we use um, Anima to get around this problem that we were going to have to have some scenes where Felicity wasn't pregnant. And so they were going to shoot with the body double and she couldn't travel because um, because she was at time in the schedule when that was happening. She was going to be too pregnant to travel. We had this kind of new exotic option available to us of using this kind of very high detail, high fidelity facial capture. And because George actually, well, George and Martin actually shot it um, and Stephen Mirioni, the film editor, actually edited it, uh, they were all kind of really invested in the result. And so that it was it was actually what they wanted rather than sort of sending the computer nerds off, you know, for three months and come back with something that might be something a bit like what they wanted, but not really. It was kind of the opposite of that. That meant that when we came to shooting it, we were able to say, look, we the only shots we really need to do on wires are pretty close ups, you know, where we're shooting their faces. Um, the rest of the time we can use this other technology that we've sort of proven for Felicity or work. And I think that's what made the, the work kind of in that spacewalk quite noteworthy. Ah! The floating blood look we'd sort of copied from uh, footage on the ISS, but there was still a lot of playing around in terms of in terms of colour and viscosity and how kind of exactly how that blood would feel and gloop, how gloopy it would be, how blobby it would be. And then the thing that we didn't realise early on was that this was all being developed in conjunction with Alexander Desplat's score, which was phenomenal at that moment. There's a real sort of pulsing heartbeat to it. So it became this very highly choreographed kind of that we've referred to as a ballet of blood. And then just to really make life even more complicated, at some point during shooting, it was mooted that we um, should have the camera continuously rolling. So in other words, kind of doing, you know, doing this the whole time. If you think about it, that sort of causes a problem because you need to cut at the end of each shot. And for the next shot, when you start, you need to be rolled exactly the right amount. Otherwise, the edit's not going to feel, it's otherwise it's going to feel very jarring. But it's also, because of the nature of the scene, it's the kind of scene where the timings are very much driven by the actor's performances. You might be moving around a bit and things like that. And so how would you ever plan that so perfectly and succinctly that you would be able to make those exact cut points at the exact time you need? That was a real challenge. So in the end, we, we shot it without rolling the camera. Um, and then digitally extended the frame. So we replaced the background and replaced the spacesuits and, and, and things like that. But because we sort of took it to that next level where we might replace the whole spacesuit instead of just painting out a little bit where the wire was, um, we were able to then keep this continuous roll on the camera, and, and which I think plays to beautiful effect because, you know, it was upside down at the moment where you were supposed to feel most disoriented. And, and it was really sort of, again, carefully choreographed uh, to, to work with the edit and work with the audio that he, and the amazing score that he was putting in. So it was, I guess, um, it's great that everybody talks about that as being the sort of visual effects high point of the film, because I think, it, you know, it probably was. Um, but at the time when we were doing it, we didn't really have any idea that it was going to go that way. 
Come in, Ether. This is Barbo Observatory. Are you receiving this?